cute. Hey guys, so it's totally not Monday. This is my friend Alyssa. She's gonna join me on this video. And her link to her YouTube page is down there. So check it out because she has some pretty funny videos. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're talking about gender roles. Yes, we are. This week. So, um, I'm just, I know you guys talk about writing, so Aubrey, what, um, what, how do you approach gender roles in your, uh, write, writing? Or do you, like, think about gender roles, or what do you think? I actually really don't. I'll be honest. I'm a bad writer. I don't think about gender roles all that much. <laughs> like, I write a lot of my characters based off of friends, mm -hmm. and just people that I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis, so... It's not always exact because I'll, you know, base characters off of some of my best friends. Like, I have characters based entirely off of you, which is really funny because <laughs> then inevitably there's characters that are like me that you yell at and it's a never ending story. <laughs> um, I mean, okay, do you ever uh, notice gender roles then when you, when you read things? Not always when I read. Yeah. I actually notice it more in media. So, mm -hmm. for example, like How to Train Your Dragon. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's a pretty big one because Hiccup and Astrid, their gender roles are reversed. Are reversed, yeah. Yep. Oh, that's a really good. That, yeah, that's such a great example. So, what other? See, okay. When I think about when I think about gender roles in like reading books, like the first thing that just popped into my mind was Twilight, which I know I'm sure you have a lot to say about. That's not. But we haven't done a video on Twilight yet. I know. Coming soon. I know. I know, but like that's like the first thing that comes to mind when I think about like gender roles in literature. It's like really, really bad, awful writing. Or like has... in fan fiction, yeah, where like... it's like Mary Sue. Or I did that wrong. <laughs> Mary Sue, maybe <laughs> Mary Sue and Gary Sue. But uh, sorry, right, right. And I think they're androgynous now. It's something that I know if I know, if I start noticing gender roles it, when I'm reading something, like I I immediately think. Like that's that's such a sign of bad writing, like it's it's just an immediate negative to me, um, and that's so obvious, <laughs> right? Because how it's so terrible obvious. it is, and it's like if you have to write gender roles, like, and your characters start falling into this cliche of like, this is the cliche of a girl. She likes pink and she wears skirts and she's sweet and she doesn't stand up for herself. And this is the cliche of the boy and he's a man and blah blah blah. You know, like. If you start falling falling into cliches, like it's just that's just not good writing. Like you're not putting enough effort into developing the characters. You're just using these tropes of society that we've constructed. Girls. Actually, the Avengers was really good because Black Widow didn't necessarily follow the same tropes that you yeah, would get with fall, a, su a female. She didn't superhero. fall into the super like super hero superwoman. What are you Female, Female superheroes. superheroes tropes. Sorry. But I mean another another really good pop culture reference, and it's another Joss Whedon one, which you can't get me wrong here, is is Firefly, because Zoe is the one that wears the pants in that relationship. We Her and Watch. Like right? Zoe wears all the pants. Yeah. All the pants. <laughs> because Watch is kind of a girly man. A but, girly man. But I I think it's it, it speaks well to his character that he is tender and very romantic, but he's also on occasion a man. I think the yeah. only real, you know, good moment where he's a man is war stories, where he's kind of, you know, a badass in his own right. And then, yeah. but then Zoe's like, sorry, I'm no. more of a badass than you. You just yeah. stay over there. And I mean, it's even, it's even kind of made fun of when Wash talks because he always talked about being a fry chef or, you know, he's a pilot. So ideally he's not supposed to be in too much of the action right, directly. Right. And he was a fry chef, fry yep. cook, however you want to go that. Yep. But, oh, God. Mm. Yeah, no, I love, I love their relationship. I love Joss Whedon just for his ability to um, create these wonderful characters who aren't one dimensional and like that relationship I, I love because it's so the first time you meet them and like it's just so strange to watch them interact and it's like wait but how did that how did that happen like he's yeah. so goofy and she's like so straight laced right she's and she's very military dry and sarcastic and he's like ah whatever you right. know 
Um, and even in Out of Gas, they re they reference all the all the uh, flashbacks. Yeah, and she's just like she's, she's like entirely against Walk, which right? is I think what makes it better. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll fine. We'll end it. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> yes, we've had quite the conversation, and thank you for being on. This is fun. We should do it more often. Absolutely, I'm all over that. This was fun. Do I, do I need to get a mop for that sarcasm, or what? Excuse me, that anyway, was not sarcasm. Stay excellent, everybody. I'll see you all next week. <laughs>